What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Shoe Marina. Today's video topic is going to be on the difference of buoyancy versus trim. And a lot of people get buoyancy and trim mixed up. They are two completely different things. Even though they work hand in hand, they are two different things altogether. Now when we talk about buoyancy, we know there's three states. Positive, neutral, and negative. Positive buoyancy, we float at the top. Neutral buoyancy, we're in the middle of the water column. And of course, negative buoyancy, we're sinking or we're down on the bottom. Now, as divers, of course, we want to be neutrally buoyant. We're not damaging the bottom, stirring up our visibility or anything like that. Plus, we have freedom of movement. Now, once I've got myself where I'm properly weighted, meaning I can hold neutral buoyancy at 15 feet for a three-minute safety stop without any other assistance, I don't have to hold on to anything, I can stay there and I'm properly weighted, now I need to focus on making sure I'm properly trimmed out in the water. Now, sometimes it's as simple as just shifting weight around one way or the other, and, and we shouldn't have any trouble. But let's say that we still do. There's other areas of the body that we can manipulate, if you will, or other parts of our equipment around our body we can manipulate to help our trim out. Now, some of the areas that we're going to talk about, of course, is our arms, our center of mass, or our center of gravity, what we'll call the fulcrum point, our BCD, our dive cylinder, our legs, and of course our feet or our fins themselves. Now when we think about center of gravity, I want you to think about a seesaw. In the middle of a seesaw, we have what's called a fulcrum point. If I shift more weight to the front, it's going to teeter that seesaw towards the front. If I adjust more weight to the back, it's going to teeter that seesaw to the back. If I put more weight in the center, then it's going to kind of balance it out. So if I add more to the front, I need to add more to the back to keep it balanced out, or I need to simply shift that weight to do the exact same thing. So let's say that I'm more heavy in the front area, if you will, my arms are out, and I'm, I'm more in that head down position, simply by bringing your arms back in towards your body instead of having them extended out may help adjust that trim. And vice versa, if I was more heavy in the back end, I can extend weight away from my body by simply extending my arms out, and that's going to help shift that weight and hopefully keep me more trimmed out in the water. Now, of course, I can change my BCD, if I'm using a jacket style, I can go into a back inflate style where it puts more of the air cell cradle in the tank itself and it puts more lift up behind you. And that tends to help a lot of divers, especially if the cylinder's on my back, if I put the lift directly under it instead of all the way around my body, that's going to hopefully help me keep or stay more trimmed out in the water as well. So that's another great option there. The scuba cylinder itself. Simply shifting it up or down within the cam strap makes a lot of difference as well. Now, I know I can go from aluminum to steel if I need a little bit extra weight or vice versa, but sliding it up or down within the cam strap, you don't have to do much, maybe a half inch to a full inch. Simply by shifting this tank up simply a, a whole inch is going to help teeter that, that trim in the water and keep me more horizontal. Even my legs, just like the arms, let's say that... Uh, I've got too much weight behind me and my feet's really heavy. If I pull my legs up, and I'll show you an example. We know what a flutter kick is. Our legs are out here behind us. We're flutter kicking. But if I want to go to a frog kick, I have to pull my legs up into this position to do a frog kick underwater. Well, simply by pulling my legs up into this position here is going to shift some of this weight back here back towards that fulcrum point. And it may be just enough shift to keep me horizontally trimmed in the water. So if you're not frog kicking, definitely check into it. If you've never uh, tried it or whatnot, have an instructor show you how to do it or one of your dive buddies show you, and I really think it'll help you out with your trim as well. Moving on back, of course, we have our fins. Now, we all know there's different styles of fins, different weights to fins. If your feet tend to be a little light, you can actually get a different fin set, get something a little bit heavier to help balance that trim out as well. And vice versa, if you have real heavy fins, you can get rid of those and get you some lighter fins. So there's many different things that we can do to adjust our trim in the water. We do want to be properly weighted so that we can hold neutral buoyancy during a safety stop for three minutes at 15 feet. But we also want to stay properly trimmed out in the water column. It's going to assist us by not having too much drag on our bodies. We're more, more fluid uh, moving through the water column. We're more streamlined. And, of course, it does give us 
better breathing or it makes our breathing a lot more efficient so that we can conserve more air and actually spend more time underwater. So guys, the difference between buoyancy versus trim, it's very important that we understand what each one is. They do work together, but they're two completely different things. So guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you got any questions on this, simply put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your questions as quickly as possible. As always, make sure to check back each week for a new video. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.